What a joy to be able to share in partnership with Pastor Rich and Clarissa and all of the great folks of Bethel. We really love you. I, I'm speaking for my wife and myself, uh, for all the folks at Faith Assembly, a brand new partner of ours in this ministry, and for all of the ministries that we are associated with and partnering in with. God is doing something incredible in the earth. And I just don't mean as a part of this whole COVID virus thing. I think this is clearly being used of the Lord in these times times to help the church come back to a relational priority and to and to really move ahead in the things of the kingdom of God. But I want to tell you that we are excited, Pastor Rich, myself, all of the team leaders that God is building together. We're excited about the future of what God has planned because we want to actually see a new normal emerge. I believe, we believe together that as we move out of this COVID situation, and we will move out of this COVID situation, everybody take a big, huge breath and say amen to that. We will move out of this. But as we do, I think the mistake is to think that we're going to go back to something. Uh, I don't think God's plan is ever for us to go back to something. The good old days honestly weren't that good. Uh, They were just old days. But the reality is that we can emerge out of every situation in our lives into a brand new normal. And I've even heard that that phrase now being used on the various news outlets and, and those kind of things as well. But I really believe we, as people of faith, need to embrace that there is a new normal that God is calling us to. And I believe that new normal includes every believer being focused upon and equipped to do the work of the ministry of the Lord Jesus, to really be powerfully used of the Lord in your future more than you ever were in your past. And I believe when that happens, it's going to be uh, partnered with a change in the attitude of the ministry family that currently exists, those who are leaders and pastors and teachers and various heads of churches and organizations. I really believe that among them, God is going to spawn a renewed commitment to partnership rather than to be the Lone Ranger, the solo leader. I really believe that teams and partnerships are the things that God is going to be using and doing and moving through as the new normal begins to emerge. So I'm excited to be on the front end of that with Pastor Rich, and I'm really excited to be able to share with all of you uh, in your pajamas, in the comfort of your home, wherever you find yourself, along with your pets and everybody else, we are glad for this opportunity to share with you. Uh, It's week three now of this eight-week time for us to be sort of set aside and uh, separated into places. And in this, as this, this cycle has emerged and we begin to be sharing these kind of things, I've noticed something, and Pastor Rich and I together have kind of agreed about this, that it looks like the, the things that the Lord has given to us to share and to explore together during this season is an abundance of the blessing of the Lord. Now, that's interesting to me because it's really a time of need. It's a time of questioning. It's a time of, for a lot of people, anxiety, fear, various kind of responses to the COVID situation. But the truth of God is that in the middle of our greatest needs, we will find him to be ever increasingly more available. There is with God always and abundance. God never ministers from a place of lack. He always ministers from a place of abundance. Let me remind you that the first of this series a couple of weeks ago was on a hope, hope that God brings into our souls, births inside of us in a powerful way that causes us to be able to abound then in hope, not just Oh, I hope so. But abundant hope and assured hope that we have in our lives. Last week, Pastor talked about the grace that God gives to us. As we are humbling ourselves, facing these humiliating times, we humble ourselves under the hand of God. And as we do, here's God. Here's God with all of his massive supply, wanting to give us not just grace, but an ever-increasing amount of grace, more grace. And this is what God gives us so that as we receive this abundant grace of God, our lives overflow with a thankfulness and with a gratitude of heart. And so that's the, that seems to be the theme that the Lord wants to speak to us about. And I want to keep in that same theme today as I speak to you and we share together about the love that God has for us, because I believe the love that God has has planned to give to us and has planned for us to really live in the fullness of is itself absolutely 
immeasurable, immeasurable, this love of God. And so I want to take you to the scripture today and read to you from Ephesians chapter three. It's an interesting prayer. And it's certainly a prayer that we are praying one for another in this season of time. But I want to start with verse number 17 of Ephesians chapter 3. It's a part of Paul's prayer for his Ephesian friends. And I'm reading to you from the New International Version. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I am praying that you, being rooted and established in love. Now, there's that phrase again. Pastor Rich talked about it last week where we are rooted and established from the Colossian epistle, rooted and established in the grace that God gives. Here we are rooted and established in the love that God has for us. And in that, we may have the power together with all the saints to grasp, to get a hold of how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge so that you might be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now, just, just for a second, let me, let me unpack that for just a minute. We are, we are wanting to know something that is, that is actually, by definition, immeasurable and beyond knowing. We're called to know. We're actually praying, oh God, God, help us to know how wide, how deep, how high, how long, how powerful, how amazing, how huge is this love of God that we can't really know. (laughs) Isn't that a great verse? There's the quest and the question at the same time. The, The quest is the question. How do I get to know? How can I get a handle on how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ? If, if essentially it's somewhere beyond my capacity to know it. And so this is, this is, this is our issue. We we're, we're wanting to know God and we're wanting to grow in the Lord. And that's, that's really what the scripture says here. We're rooted and grounded in the love of God. And I hope that's true for you. If it's not, please, please, please know. Please know no matter what your situation, no matter what your history, no matter where you've been, no matter the attitude that you may be dealing with today and the situations of your life, God loves you with an amazing, everlasting love. And he has nothing that he would rather do than make you know that than to help you to experience that today. He is in love with us. That's why he made us. Not for a powerful, productive relationship. Not so we could give big amounts of money. Not so we could preach really cool sermons or do nifty things for God. No, he's created us so that we could live in the confines and the context of a love relationship with him, where his love is filling our lives on a day-by-day basis. We are receiving from him and we are loving him in the same way. We're loving him because he first loved us. How exciting is that? This is what God has called us to. And so this is what we know, but this is also what we grow in. So we're rooted, we're grounded, but while we're rooted and grounded, we're deepening our roots. We're expanding our reach. We are seeing every increasing day with every new situation. How wide, how long, how deep, how high is the love of Christ? We're exploring and experiencing the love of God on a day by day basis. How wide, how deep, how long, how high is the love of God? It's really hard to know, isn't it? I remember years ago, I'm a storyteller, and so I have to, I have to tell just a couple of these as we go. But I remember years ago, uh, I was probably, I would say back in the late 80s, perhaps. My sons were much smaller. They're now grown men, families of their own. But back in the day, um, I happen to be the babysitter for the day. We were in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. And if you've never been there, whenever the travel bans are lifted, go. It is absolutely beautiful, beautiful shopping area. If you like old town, old city, old world stuff, Sturbridge is the place for you. And so we were there with my wife, my family, uh, her parents, and everybody wanted to go shopping but me. And the kids, of course, they get my boys. They don't want to go shopping, especially at uh, six and nine years of age, which I think they were at the time. And so 
we assigned ourselves the responsibility of allowing them to go shopping while we went off to Sturbridge Lake. It's a really beautiful little area uh, with a beach there and everything that you would want to need for the beach. And so uh, at, we took, a, a, I remember taking a bag full of goodies, buckets and uh, the, the, what they called, I guess, beach pails, uh, the, the little shovels that you use, the rakes, the various kind of things. I had no intent on using any of them, of course. I just wanted to have my boys taken care of. So I, I, I just sprawled this whole thing out on the beach for the boys and they lit up like bulbs. And I went and found myself a place to sit and watch them. And I brought my Bible with me. Like I do, I love the Bible just like you do. I love the word. And it just so happened that I was reading in these verses. And it was, it was interesting to me because there's a carrot on the end of the stick here. There is, there's a, a kind of a, this thing that God hangs out in front of you when you read this verse. If you could ever get a handle on knowing how deep and how wide and how high and how long is the love of God. If you could get a, a, a revelation of something that you really can't fully understand. If you ever get to that place where you know the unknowable, if your quest ever answers the question, then in that moment, you're going to be filled with all the fullness of God. And so I thought, ooh, ooh, I'm in. But, but the longer I sat there, the more frustrated I became, the more I thought, you know what, I, how do I know the unknowable? What, I know there's truth here. I know that you love me. I know that I love you because you love me. But, but, but there's got to be more. There's got to be something that I don't get in this. And so in the middle of my frustration, I kept watching the boys. And of course, that's just part of what parental responsibility demands. But as I was watching them, I noticed how much fun they were having because they were just, they were just, it was just a beautiful sunshiny day. And they were running back and forth from the lake at Sturbridge to this little hole in the, in the sand, this area that they had in the sand where they were working and, and buckets in hand and little shovels and back and forth and laughing and just having a great time. And so I, I thought, well, they look like they're having so much more fun than me. So I think I'll go join their party rather than asking them to come to mine. And so when I went out to join them, Jared, my youngest son at the time, six years old, uh, he was the first one to see me. And he, he just lit up. He said, dad, dad, come on. You got to see this. This is the greatest thing. And I, I just thought, yes. I ran over and I, I just stood there and he said, you look at dad, dad, look, you're going to love this. Look, look look. <laughs> and, and I looked, looked, looked <laughs> at a hole, <laughs> just a, you know, clunky hole in the beach. And you could see where the edges had, had gone down some and were caving in from the sides. And there was still a, a bit of water in the bottom collected there. And, and I, I looked at it and I thought, yeah, but I didn't want to discourage my son with my own. I was as confused about that as I was about the scripture. And so I, I just, I said, Jared, that's great. That's so exciting. Way to go. And my oldest son, Jeremy, nine years old at the time, still a thinker, still figures it all out. He put his hands on his hips. He said, you don't even know what it is. <laughs> I thought, you are, you are so right. I really, know. Jared was crestfallen, you know, because he just was, he knew I knew. And I, I, I admitted, I, I just put my hands up. I said, you're right, I don't. And they both said, Dad, we're putting the lake in the hole. <laughs> in the moment, <laughs> you, know, you know how parents are. Come on, we're parents. I, I just, what do I do? I, they're so excited. And I want to preserve their excitement. And I want to encourage them for what's going on and how, how really cool this is. And at the same time, I'm, I'm feeling like Bill Nye, the science guy you know, that I should teach them about water tables and how the water that you pour in the hole is actually going back into the lake. And it's, this is just going to be a continuing cycle that you're never actually going to finish. It's never actually going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. They're putting the lake in the hole. And about that time, as I was thinking, what do I do? It was just like the Lord settled down in the middle of that little beach. And he put his hands on my shoulders and basically said to me, son, that's exactly what the scripture is talking about. And I can see it in a moment. That's the way revelation works. You don't figure it out every bit. You don't really apply it every bit, but you see it in this flash of God's brilliance. And I could see it for the moment that they had all that they could take of the love of God. Their buckets were full. The hole was filled. They were filled with the fullness of the lake of love. And they had all of it in the hole that they could get. 
in that moment. Now, yeah, it's going to leak. It's going to run out. They're going to have to run back, but there's an end to the supply. It just keeps cycling back. They're never going to run out. They're never going to experience the disappointment of it all. And so I, I looked at that. I heard it from the Lord and I said to them, yes, yeah. I think I was saying it to the Lord just as much as to my kids, but yes, yes, this is great. You, you, you are putting the lake in the hole. And in fact, here you go. You could put more of the lake in the hole and you could do it faster if you had bigger buckets. I wanted to inspire them. And my oldest son said, well, yeah, but we don't have bigger buckets, but we have extra buckets. So dad, if you help us, man, we will be able to do this faster. And so what could I say? I was captured by my own words. And for the next half of an hour, you got to get this picture. I fancy myself, you know, preacher, teacher, you know, a national traveling person, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> all those things that we do in our true humility before the Lord. And for the next half hour, I just found myself running back and forth with buckets, two buckets in my hand, back and forth to Sturbridge Lake, from Sturbridge Lake to this little hole in the beach. And if you'd have run up and asked me at any date in that time, what are you doing? I would have said, I'm putting the lake in the hole because that's really a part of what it is. But you know something? While I did that, while I enjoyed that, while I understood that, I also understand that there's a kind of a weakness in that picture. It really is. I just, because when, when I think about it, every time I would come back to the hole, I would find it just, the, the frustrating part was it kept leaking. It kept collapsing. It kept, it didn't have the capacity to stay full. It just leaked. And so I, I just, I thought, you know, God, there has to be a better picture, a more apt picture. And the way the Lord does with our lives, we step, we grow, we learn. Our quest leads us to question. Our, our mastery of one thing leads us to the mystery of the next thing. We, we move forward a step at a time. Sometimes we take side steps, but we grow in the grace and the knowledge and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what this scripture is encouraging us to do, that we might be then filled with all the measure of the fullness of God. And I love that verse because when I, when I read that, I began to think, you know what? If God doesn't help me, then this really isn't going to happen. So you've got to help me, Lord. You've got to, you've got to come and provide some pathways for me to walk on that will help me. And then I read the rest of the verses, of course. It says, let me read them to you, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Isn't that exciting? He is able to do exceeding abundantly above. I love it when God piles up adjectives. Above is pretty good. You know, God just doesn't do it. He does it above. Remember, we're talking about abounding. He does it above. But then he does it uh, a little more than above. Abundantly above. And then he does it not just abundantly above, but exceeding abundantly above. In other words, he doesn't just provide his love. He provides an unending flow of the love and the grace that you and I need. So that while we are questing to know everything there is, while we are seeking to master this mystery of the glorious love of God, while we commit ourselves to living in this love of God, our life of living is a life of loving him and in him and through him every single day, we understand that God is providing ever-increasing grace, ever-increasing supply of the love of God. And so that brought me to this age-old question. I actually have a little, a few props with me that I want to share with you because there's this old question that I hear asked a lot. And, and it re really right now is probably a great time that people talk about it. Is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? I have two of them here. Because, you know, the truth is it's really easy to say, well, you know, if, if you're an optimist, when the glass is always, you know, half full. If you're a pessimist, the glass is always half empty. Oh. But in either case, you know, you're looking about the capacity 
to contain something. And remember, I think we learned last week something about capacity to control outcomes. That's really not in your purview or mine. This is something we leave to the Lord. But here's what I'd like to suggest as well. You know, it depends on another perspective. It depends on whether you're giving or receiving. Because if you're giving, then you see the glass as half empty because your capacity to keep giving is going down with the more you pour. If you're receiving, then your glass is half full because you're looking at your capacity to be filled up. And here's the truth. In either one of these, the weakness is that it's about the capacity of the cup. What happens when you get to the place where the cup is full? Well, then, oh, yeah, it's the overflow. It's the blessing of that. God help us to overflow. You know what? I think that's a great prayer for us to pray. And I do pray that God helps you to overflow. But let me give you a better suggestion. Let me give you what I think is a lasting picture and a lasting suggestion. And it'll be the last thing that I give you today before we pray and before we turn you back to these wonderful, capable leaders for times of sharing and praying and rejoicing together. But, but here's the truth. If we weren't just concerned with our capacity, to hold something or to receive something, to contain something. We wouldn't have to think about how, how much more we have to give or how much more we have to receive. What if instead of being a cup, we were actually a conduit? I'm, I'm holding a, a hose here, a little piece of hose. It's, it's uh, appropriately weathered looking, but you and I both know how hoses work. You hook them into a source, into a supply, and you turn the flow of that on. But here's the truth. This hose, does, is, it's, its capacity is, if I cap the end of the hose, the capacity is that much. And I don't know how many ounces that would be, but I can tell you that is a limited, effective tool. It can only hold the capacity. In fact, if I disconnected it and then I poured out what was in it, it would just be that limited amount. But if I uncap this end, it's hooked to the source, and through it flows this life-giving water, in our case, this life-giving love of God, and it flows out, and it flows out, and it flows out. When, when isn't it full? When isn't it absolutely full of the love of God? It's always full, because it's not interested in capacity. It's not interested in its, its efficacy to receive something. It's interested in delivery. It's interested in putting something out on this end, ministering to those who are around us. And here's the beauty. Here's the beauty. My dear, precious, beloved friends, here's the beauty of the Lord who loves us with an everlasting love. He said, I believe Jesus said this. I'm only going to really complicate your world with one new commandment. Just one. Now their world was complicated with a bunch, but here's what he said. A new commandment I'm giving you, that you love everybody that you love the way that I love them, the way that my love works. You hook yourself up to my divine love and you don't need a bucket. You just need to be committed to being a conduit because from this day forward, I'm going to make your life a pipeline of the love of God to everyone, everywhere, every day, in every possible way. This, this is what Paul prayed for the Ephesians. This is what Pastor Rich and Clarissa and Chris and I are praying for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will help each and every one of these precious people who are gathered and each and every one that they love and that they touch and that they serve and that they are in a circle of influence with. We pray for the love of the Lord Jesus and the blessing of the Almighty God, your graciousness, the hope that you bring, the grace that you bring, the glorious love that you want to fill us with, that it will in fact create a joy and a rejoicing in our spirits, that it will take our fellowship with one another and our prayers and our concerns for one another to a whole new level of 
of love and serving and caring and giving and sharing. We believe you for that, Lord God, because we don't want to be concerned so much with our capacity to either receive or give. We really want to be more of a pipeline for the love of God to actually not just fill us, but fill us as it flows through our lives on a day-by-day basis. And for this we pray, and to this we commit ourselves again this week. And we pray knowing that you will give us marvelous, marvelous opportunities this week in this current environment to share the glorious love of Jesus Christ. You'll give us great opportunities this week, right now, to celebrate this love of God. And so we pray your blessing on each and every one in the powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen.